So today I want to talk to you about diffusion models and then we're going to train a diffusion model very specifically by the end of this video, but I want to show you and showcase how diffusion actually works overall and dive deeper into some of that before we get into the actual training and showcasing that. And then so first of all, the first paper I want to talk about here is this research paper and it was released on March or October 27, 2023 understanding the latent space of diffusion models through the lens of Riemannian geometry. And this paper, so diffusion models, they operate via a denoising process um, and then it's reverse diffusion, right? So then they start off with a lot of noise and then they end up with um, uh, diffusing that noise out and then end up with like an image, right? And then it ends up essentially they train on and they generate a probabilistic and a stochastic blend of the images that they're trained on. And that stochastic blend is very important, right? Because that stochasticity is built into the model and it's how it operates. Like, so we know that the stochasticity and stochastic function is, is the how. We also know that this operates within um, latent space, meaning that um, like a space within the model, right? A, um, uh, up digital space, we can call it, and uh, that um, this space is responsible for uh, kind of like uh, how the model utilizes distance measurements and things like that. And so uh, within that, up until like uh, late October 2023, we didn't know how to like uh, fully adjust <laughs> these models, right? Like how to uh, like fully adjust a training image of uh, like a diffusion model, for example, right? Like if it um, generated a probabilistic image, we wouldn't know how to fully trace it back 100%. It was a, it was a question like, and so that's uh, this research paper, uh, they go into it and they tie it very specifically to Romanian geometry, um, topology, um, geometry overall, right? There's a lot of reasons why I, I, I talk a lot about geometry and um, Riemannian geometry very specifically on this channel, right? Because more and more research ties uh, every AI process back to this. It's important to understand that, like, so across the board when it comes to AI, uh, there's like a big question of like, why does it work? So uh, I've stated this like multiple times before on my channel, right? The uh, like in the most simplistic way that I look at it is AI is invented in nineteen fifty like nineteen fifty six or so we'll call it, and then that introduces the concept of the perceptron. Then in nineteen sixty nine you have the Minsky paper, which says that the perceptron doesn't work. That the perceptron that the way that they think it will scale, all of that it will never happen, and like no way it will ever occur that way. Uh, and then it's what leads to the first AI winter, right? Because they're right. But then people kind of tweak the formula, they change it, and then so it becomes something completely different, something completely alien than what was invented in the 1950s. Uh, and then that's when you get like kind of this um, rebirth of AI in the 1980s, right? But so the 1980s AI is completely different than the 1950s AI. They add new stuff to it. Uh, and then the one of the big things that they add is like stochastic gradient descent. Um, and then so going into uh, kind of deeper into those concepts and these kind of um, more probabilistic aspects start getting added into it, right? And then so uh, later on, we find reverse diffusion works and, and then that, that, that's a process of all that you can do. We find more and more that you can do more and more things with reverse diffusion. Uh, and then the logic now is, is that all of this works because it's all tied to diffusion overall, which is kind of like my biggest knock on this overall, right? Is that, uh, so I don't like diffusion overall because these mo like diffusion models are very large. They're very big, right? That's the biggest barrier to uh, all of this. The barrier to entry with diffusion models isn't that it's hard to do, that these are hard concepts to understand. It's that this takes so much computational resources and compared to anything else, right? And then like, like it takes more computational resources than it would take me to create an NLP model, to create a model to talk to you, to chat with you, <laughs> uh, than it does to create a diffusion model overall. They're two very distinct and different processes, right? And so the diffusion model overall is is just bigger. Uh, and then the second, like the the biggest thing and and biggest component within that that I would cite is that so 
uh, you all like the new image generation that's from the new ChatGPT model. <laughs> that's all I see is that everyone's talking about like how this image generation just blows away all other previous image generation, et cetera, et cetera, right? So the ChatGPT image generation is not based off of diffusion. Like all of this goes away. Like if you're you're invested right now in like stable diffusion, whatever diffusion model, the mid journey, uh, Leonardo, like whatever current diffusion based models that you're using, you're investing in, you're building up, they they're gone within a year. 100% like because they don't they're not the same infrastructure uh, as that GPT as the new GPT 4.0 model is. Uh, OpenAI has been very tight lipped as to like what exactly and, and how exactly um, they did what they you know how exactly they pulled it off. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm like I'm pretty confident that uh, we have the answer that the answer is out there. <laughs> and to me, I think the answer is within this research paper called "Exploiting Mixture of Experts Redundancy Unlocks Multimodal Generative Abilities," and this was put out April for well, updated April first, twenty twenty five. Uh, and then it's put out by the University of Edinburgh, Imperial College of London, Leonardo.ai, University of Surrey, Queen Mary University of London, and Microsoft Research of Cambridge. Very specifically, uh, this paper essentially shows and an, is a model for uh, creating a multimodality within like a transformers based model. And it's a like uh, kind of a um, simple architecture and, and simple to understand once you break it down right like, like these things are um not that complex of concepts once you understand like oh it actually works and it goes back to again uh, uh when it comes to a lot of these pieces we're still fitting the puzzle pieces together within this right and then so uh, what the major innovation is within this is that when you're dealing with a transformer model and then you're dealing with the parameters of the transformer model and then you have a process where like it's a multimodal process, right? Um, some parameters will light up more at, depending on whether or not it's an image or a text or, you know, whatever the, the modality is, uh, they'll activate more than others. And then some will activate for multimodalities, right? Um, and then so you just tune those weights that are more like active to be multimodal weights we'll call them uh, uh, multimodal parameters and then so you tune those very specific parameters very narrowly um, and then you densely train those those parameters overall um, and then pass those off and then essentially uh, well, the second thing is, is that um, you do this same type of concept for the uh, mixture of experts themselves, right? So like um, some of the mixture of experts will have uh, like we'll call it like spare capacity <laughs> uh, in, in a certain instance, right? Uh, in, in parameters. And then so you just essentially it's just changing up the training process of the um uh, of a mixture of experts model just very slightly um, and then it gets you uh, and then you put a diffusion block into the diffusion transformers and then you get access to everything that you would with a big diffusion model right and then so that kind of goes us goes back here uh, and goes back to my initial argument as to like why exactly uh, you would need a big model like why exactly i think that um diffusion models are dead within a year overall is because of all of this right because you can do this which is better um cheaper overall um you like the outputs better um they turn into like what we see with gpt 4.0 compared to what you see with diffusion models which again they're very large and intensive to work with but uh so i think this is the future overall, but uh, the present is is that we're working with diffusion models, and then so I promise you that we'll go through the training of a diffusion model here. So um, here's the um, here's the collab notebook for a basic training of a diffusion model. So to train a diffusion model, um, utilizing unconditional image generation is a popular application of diffusion models that generates images that look like those in a data set used for training. Typically, the best results are obtained from fine-tuning a pre-trained model on a specific data set. Uh, and then so you can find many of those on the Hopping Face Hub. And then so this tutorial will specifically walk through, through training a unit 2D model from scratch 
on a subset of the Smithsonian Butterflies data set to generate your own butterflies. <laughs> and so uh, this training, the tutorial walking through it very specifically, you do want to uh, uncomment the uh, comment that they have here to install uh, diffusers as well as training. Uh, and then you do want to install, I, I don't know why they have it here just as a comment, but you want to install uh, and load uh, image uh, um, data sets as well as accelerate. So you need those two packages. Uh, so it's a pip install data sets and accelerate on top. And then from here, you're going to want to log in to your Hugging Face uh, Hub, or you can use the uh, uh, CL client term terminal to log in there. And then again, like these, uh, I can't stress enough that when you're dealing with Diffusion, every single time it's huge, right? It's so it's too big for Colab. Um, no matter what you're dealing with, um, so within this that you got, you have to do some kind of like a bunch of workarounds in order to like actually get this to work within a collab notebook. And so, like this boils down to the main reasons why I hate working with this. Right, uh, the reason why you have to do all of these workarounds and all of these steps is just because the model is too big. It's so huge, right? Uh, and then there's just no way around it. It's not that it's complicated. It's just that like it's it's big and it takes up so much resources, like beyond. Uh, consumer grade resources overall. Uh, and then so you have your training configuration. Um, and then so training configuration is very straightforward, right? You have like um, your image resolution, uh, which you want to like shrink down. So it's usually like 128, your training batch size. In this instance, we have 16 number of epochs. We're training it for 50. Uh, and then so this is like a typical training process, right? And let's say that like you want to fine tune um, your like the diffusion model. This is the exact process that you would go through, right? Like I see people, they uh, have like a, you know, you want to fine tune it to like be like, I don't know, like Harry Potter or like fine tune it for fast food ads or whatever it is that you want to fine tune it on. What you can see very specifically within this is that we're training it like, so in this instance, we're fine tuning it on butterflies, right? Um, so I can't stress that enough with how this stochasticity works and, and how this works. When you're fine tuning the model, like you want to fine tune it um, each individual like fine tuning job and so like each model that you produce within this should be as narrow as possible so like if you want to fine tune it to be like um, your professional image person <laughs> creates professional images of you you want to make sure that you're only fine tuning it on like images of you like don't throw in a picture of like a dog in there or throw in a picture of an, a different person because that will play into that stochasticity every single time, right? And it's going to blend in. And so you don't want that. You don't want outlier images. Like you want them to be exactly what you want it to be. And so that's the most important part of, and like the hardest part overall of this like diffusion training process. So like the hardest part is one, making sure that you have, um, let's say, um, a, three thousand dollar computer or better <laughs> uh, it's kind of the bottom line to like run these things like efficiently and well locally if you want it to like actually be like running well uh, and like to actually do stuff with it um, so that's barrier number one barrier number two is uh, like shrinking down and, and understanding that you want a small data set like people like they try to throw too much images like and when they're fine-tuning these things right it's not like fine-tuning a transformers model like you don't want uh, like a thousand rows of data <laughs> so in the, like we want like in this instance 16 butterflies for 50 epochs right um, and then that's exactly what we do and then so we just uh, we train it uh, in this model for you know on the 16 images for 50 epochs and then that's how you go through the process and then if you need to refine and add more uh, images and add more epochs from there generally speaking it's adding more epochs right like you want the model to like um we'll call it overfit <laughs> because that's exactly what you're trying to get it to do right you're trying to get it to predict within like this particular latent space as we laid out within the research paper there uh for uh predicting with a 100 within the boundaries of whatever you're training it on and then it's kind of how the diffusion process works overall right um and then so from there it's just very like uh, uh you just once you have the training model uh and you have it trained um then you you're just um pre-processing and transforming it essentially like this is all like all post training processes right um and then uh from here you're um doing more pre-processing
visualizing, and then you're creating the, the unit, you're creating the actual diffusion model here. Then you're going to output your images so you can actually see your images. Uh, and then so this is where you create the scheduler. So the scheduler behaves differently depending on whether you're using the model for training or inference. During inference, the scheduler generates images from the noise. During training, the scheduler takes a model output or a sample, so butterflies in this instance, from a specific point in the diffusion process and applies noise to the image according to a noise schedule and an update rule. Like the scheduler is like for during the inference process, that's what it's training on. That's the latency. That's the creation of the latent space, right? So going back here, it's creating the geometry, it's creating the world that you're you're fine tuning it on. And then again, you want to make sure that that world is tight, right? So if it's butterflies, only butterflies, don't put in like a dragonfly uh, image in there because then your world's gonna be messed up, right? It will be a stochastic blend of five butterflies and one dragonfly and then just be all bad. Um, and then so then you train the model overall uh, and then you go through and evaluate the model, wrap all of them together into a training loop, and then you get your outputs, right? And then so once your image is complete and outputs are complete, you can output butterfly images. <laughs> and then you can see that it's stochastic representations of the butterflies, right? So, and of the butterfly images. So, and, and it doesn't know what a butterfly is. It's just stochastically putting these images together. So it's not always going to uh, reconstruct them in a way that makes 100% human sense. Uh, and it's not gonna reconstruct them in a way that would be uh, like actually like true, like uh, universal, right? Like, um, so you could get like unique butterfly patterns out of this if you train it from more epochs, again, give it more pictures, et cetera, it's going to, to work better. Uh, and then this is a smaller model overall, right? This isn't like, a, this is a model that you can uh, be able to run within a Google Colab environment. And then so it's not um, like stable diffusion or anything like that. So it's not gonna be like the best images that you can generate overall. But this, so this is the process, right? The process is, is not the easiest to set up right like there's no like there's not an easy front end <laughs> for diffusion model training which is i think like like that's like a, a so barrier number one is the expense right it's just hugely expensive barrier number two is that it's like uh, there's not a front end uh, in order to like go through these things um, to to set it up. Uh, and then barrier number three is like actually understanding and, and wanting to like uh, knowing how to train the models uh, and then just like creating the latent space and understanding like how diffusion works overall as a process. So that's kind of why I went through all of these steps for you to give you kind of a full understanding within it uh, overall. Um, and then so this gives you uh, hopefully like a, if you are into um, diffusion or want to get into diffusion, kind of a quick overview and a quick start into it. Um, but then like, again, I think that um, they're within the next year. So this is uh, by April 1st, 2026. I think that they'll, they'll be done because I mean, uh, it, like the market speaks for itself, right? If you like the GPT 4.0, uh, better it's utilizing this and it's, and it's not based off of pure diffusion um and then so that's just the way that it goes <laughs> like uh technology moves quick right that's why i don't invest in a single uh part of this technology personally right like i'm not invested in like oh putting out diffusion models because i think like diffusion models are are yesterday now <laughs> and, and so uh if you like this type of content overall please like subscribe thank you very much